All right. Properties of logarithms are very important and very useful to us in, in solving equations sometimes, and so it's good to know our way around it. And so what I want to warm up with is actually properties of exponents because they're very closely related because they're inverse, inverses of each other. And so when you have a multiplied together here, we added the exponents. And so we got x to the 8th. Here, we subtracted the exponents. x to the 5th divided by x squared, we did x to the 5th minus 2 and got x to the third. And x to the fourth raised to the third is when we multiplied it, raised it a power to a power, and so that's when we get x to the twelfth. So, same base, we can add the exponents, like we said. b to the x plus y. Here, we can subtract the exponents. And here, we can multiply. So it's important that you see if two things are multiplied here, we can change them into added. So if a log is made up of two parts that are multiplied, we can split them up into a log base b of x plus a log base b of y. So one log multiplied, two logs added. So the opposite of here we have one exponent that's added into two that are multiplied. It's the exact opposite of what logs do from exponents. And so in the same way if you have multiplication, now it's division, we're going to have two separate logs that are subtracted. So base b of y. And so we're going to subtract them. And so in the same sense, what we did over here. If we have a power raised to a power, power raised to a power is going to change into multiplication. And so we're going to take this power and bring it down in front. We can write that as n times the log base b of x. And so the first thing we're going to do is expand some expressions using these properties. And so fully expanded is no more multiplication within any log and no more powers with any log. Fully expanded. So we've got multiplication here. And so we're going to have log base 8 of 16 plus log base 8 of x squared. That's our first property. And then we're going to take it one more step because we've got a power here that we're going to bring down in front. So this is going to be log base 8 of 16 plus 2 times log base 8 of x. All right, next property. So we've got two that are going to be multiplied up top, and then we're dividing by those. So we've got log of x and log of y. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that 2 down in front already. And I'm going to bring the 4 down in front already. And no problem there, we're adding them together. Now we want the 100 and the z to go in the bottom, so you have a couple different options. You can either say subtracting the log of 100 plus the log of z, but it needs to be in parentheses, or you could say 2 times the log of x plus 4 times the log of y, and then make sure that both of them are subtracted. Essentially, how it happens is that anything that's positive is going to end up on top, and anything that's negative is going to end up on the bottom, just like negative exponents. All right, next one. We've got 12 and x, two separate logs that we're going to have, and then we're going to have powers that come down in front of those. So just like we did in the last problem, we're going to take care of the powers and separating them at the same time. So we have log base 3 of 12. 12 is raised to the 2 thirds. That's going to come down in front. 
with the last property plus log of x, same base, and we're going to bring the 7 down in front. And that is fully expanded. Now, this one's slightly different um, because the square root, if you remember, represents the one half power. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the one half down in front. One half times the log of 3x. Because the one half applies to both the 3 and the x. And so if we separate them now, you can have a one half in front of with parentheses, or you could just write one half in front of both of them. So one half log of 3 plus one half log of x. You could also factor out the, the one half and it would have the same effect. All right. Next one, we've got log base 8 of 2x plus y. And so what you can do is bring this 5 down in front, just like we did the 1 half. 5 times the log base 8 of 2x plus y. Now it's very tempting here to say, well, it's 2x plus y, and so I want to separate it into the log base 8 of 2x plus 5 times the log base 8 of y. However, we can't do it. It's wrong. Because here's the difference. Here we had multiplication, and we split multiplication up into two logs that are added. We can't take addition and separate it into two logs that are added. So warning, log of x plus the log of y does not equal the log of x plus the log of y. So warning, don't do this. The log is not distributive over addition like that. Um, don't think of it as such. And now we're going to condense it. That's when we go the opposite direction. And we condense it, and another direction might be right as a single logarithm. And so for this, if we have two logs that are added, we're going to go from this side of the property to this side of the property. So we could change it to log base 3 of 13 times 3, or log base 3 of 39. And if this 3 to some power was 39, you could simplify that some more. Now we've got this 3 that can be raised to that power. And so we've got log base 6 minus log of 1 third raised to the 3. So we have log base 6 minus log 1 third times 1 third times 1 third is 1 27th. And so that's going to simplify into one log. If there are two separate logs subtracted, one log that's divided. So 6 divided by 1 27th. 6 divided by 1 27th is the same as 6 times 27 over 1. And so 27 times 6 is log of 162. Lots of stuff going on in the next problem. We'll take care of it in the next video.